Major breaking news out of the federal court in the Southern District of Illinois. Specifically, that major challenge to Illinois' ban on suppressors has been assigned to Judge Stephen McGlynn. This is a big deal for the reasons we're going to talk about when I get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Box of Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so. Show your love for the United States Constitution. All right, folks, we have breaking news, geeky news that's going to be overlooked by many, but not by you guys here on the Four Boxes Diner because I'm making you the smartest people in the Second Amendment movement. That's my goal. All right, here's the story. Right now, there are five cases I want you to be focused on in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Illinois. Four of those cases deal with federal Second Amendment challenges in federal court against the recently enacted and silly and absurd Illinois state ban on so-called assault weapons, which are just semi-automatic rifles, and so-called large capacity magazines, which as you know, are just standard capacity magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. Okay, there's also a fifth case. So there's four cases challenging that. We're gonna talk about those in just one second, but there's a fifth case that was just commenced. You saw a video I did on this just yesterday, specifically dealing with a federal challenge to Illinois' ban on the possession of suppressors or silencers, which as you know are NFA items. Now, the reason why we're talking about these five cases today is because that suppressor case was just assigned to a judge. That judge was a Trump-nominated judge named Stephen McGlynn. And you're like, why do I care about Judge Stephen McGlynn? The reason why you care about Judge McGlynn is that he is already presiding over the four cases pending in front of him dealing with Illinois' ban on so-called assault weapons and, mag and large capacity magazines. Those four cases are Barnett versus Ray Ugle, which involves the National Shooting Sports Foundation. The second case is Harrell versus Ray Ugle, which is the case involving the Firearms Policy Coalition, the Second Amendment Foundation, and the Illinois State Rifle Association, all of whom are named plaintiffs. And then you have a case called Fire uh, of Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois versus Pritzker. This is a case where the Gun Owners of America is a named plaintiff. So good luck to the plaintiffs in these various cases. The last case, which I know the least about, is Langley versus Kelly. But that's a fourth case out there, all of which are in front of Judge uh, McGlynn. Now we have the suppressor case, which was just assigned to him, claiming that the Illinois ban on suppressors violates the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms uh, under the Nyserpa versus Bruin standard and the Heller standard of in common use. Now, the reason why this is so important is because in those four cases that have been pending dealing with the Illinois statute banning weapon, you know, um, semi-automatic rifles and magazines, this is the order that Judge McGlynn entered. Now, Judge McGlynn entered the following order. Quote, within the response to the motion for preliminary injunction, which was filed by, of course, the plaintiffs, pro-Second Amendment plaintiffs, defendants, that would be the state of Illinois and the related defendants, defendants shall provide illustrative examples of each and every item banned under 720 ILCS 524.1.9. You see what he just did? Judge McGlynn said, I want to know examples of each and every item that you claim has been banned by this statute. I think that's quite significant because that's really putting the Illinois state politicians and their lawyers to the task of laying out exactly what they claim is banned. And you know and I know they're going to lay out the most basic firearms that every American basically owns um, as going to be on this list which I think is very favorable to you because as you know, when you're dealing with an arms possession ban case, 
like a ban of a magazine or a ban of ammunition or a ban on a semi-automatic handgun or a ban on semi-automatic rifles, uh, if those are in common use by Americans for lawful purposes, which all of these things I just described are clearly, yes, they are, to the tune of tens of millions of these things, if not hundreds of millions in the case of magazines holding more than 10 rounds, um, this is protected under the Second Amendment under the Heller, Caetano, and Bruin standards. That's pretty black letter law, and this is good. Now, the reason why I want to talk about Stephen McGlynn is because that order tells us that he really has his head in the right place. And that's also going to tell me his head is likely going to be in the right place when he considers this suppressor case. But there's something I want to give you specifically that I think is very interesting and powerful and tells us why the anti-gunners and the government cannot dupe, cannot snow, cannot basically uh, you know, blind Judge McGlynn uh, with fake information about guns in America. And that's because I'm holding in front of me right here a document called the United States Senate Committee on the Judiciary Questionnaire for Judicial Nominees. And who does this document relate to? Well, lo and behold, it relates to Stephen Patrick McGlynn. That's right, Judge McGlynn. This was filed to the United States Senate as part of his confirmation process. He was nominated to the federal bench by President Trump. And he, of course, was confirmed by the United States Senate. That's all great news. But here's what's interesting, and I just want to make you happy for the day because it's my job not just to educate you, but also to some degree make you happy and entertain you. Uh, I want you to turn your attention. I'll try to put a link to this down below uh, for those geeks out there that actually want to read a 100-page uh, questionnaire from a, a nominee to the federal bench who's now a judge. Uh, take a look at pages 5 and 6, which list his memberships. These memberships include include a list of all professional, business, fraternal, scholarly, civic, charitable, and other organizations, and so on and so on and so on. That's on page five. Now, guess what gets listed on page six? And you're like, hey, Mark, you really are a geek. How would you even know this? Well, on page six, I'm going to give you a couple organizations that Judge McGlynn had previously been involved with prior to becoming a federal judge. One is the Illinois State Rifle Association, which he was a member from 2005 to 2013, and the National Rifle Association of America, which he's been a member or was a member since 2005, which is a very good sign because this tells me if you're a member of the Illinois State Rifle Association and you're a member of the National Rifle Association, you probably know a little bit about firearms and you cannot be duped. So when someone tries to convince you that a bump stock is a machine gun or that a magazine shoots extra fast, well, you're going to kind of know that, man, that's probably not really true because I have a bunch of these things in my closet and they're pretty basic items like hammers. And I don't think they're like fully automatic 50 caliber, you know, rifles uh, or machine guns that we would see, you know, being fired out of like a B-17 in World War II or out of a Black Hawk helicopter today. And that's, I think, very good news. And I think that Stephen McGlynn, the federal judge overseeing these five separate cases, four of which dealing with assault weapon ban, four of which are dealing with a magazine ban, and one of which involving this Illinois state suppressor ban, this is very good news for the home team because I think it's going to make it very difficult for the anti-gunners to, again, dupe Judge McGlynn with their rhetoric and their arguments because I think one of the problems we have in America is that we go in front of prominent federal judges who are totally unfamiliar with firearms technology and they can easily be duped and told things like, hey, a single fire, a single shot of a 223 round is going to blow off someone's head. And we know that's simply not possible. And nevertheless, I think judges out there might believe it because they have no idea because a lot of them have never touched a gun. And uh, that's just the way it is. And that's something we have to confront and overcome in the Second Amendment community. But I think we're doing it in part for, you know, I think thanks to channels like mine and many of my other friends that I met at the Gundy's, for example, uh, I think we are all contributing to the raising an elevation of knowledge involving firearms, firearms law, and the Second Amendment in a way that had never been done before here in the United States, at least not to this degree. And I'm hopeful that I help contribute to protecting our constitutional rights, including our right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. Okay, I hope you learned a little bit something here about Stephen McGlynn, Judge Stephen McGlynn, and the five cases that he's currently overseeing, the fact that his first order asking the state to list all the items that they claim to be banned. I think this is all a good sign the Judge McGlynn gets it. He's going to really follow the law and do what needs to be done under the law to make the right decision. And as I can tell, these should be relatively easy cases to rule in favor of the Second Amendment. They should not be hard cases. But again, one never knows for sure when you get into court what's going to happen. Uh, it's very unpredictable. But I think that these all are signs that point in a positive direction that 
our friends in the state of Illinois will have their rights protected. And of course, we're not even talking in this video about some of the success they've already uh, seen in state court in Illinois. We're only talking about these federal cases pending right now in the Southern District of Illinois. Okay, folks, again, hope you learned something here at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we'll see you again soon at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.